from the crown to the toe, peripheral nervous system. The nervous system provides the integrated functioning of all organs and systems of the body and its interaction with the external environment. Anatomically, the nervous system is divided into central and peripheral. The CNS includes the brain and spinal cord, respectively. The PNS consists of the ganglia and the nerves outside the CNS. Functionally, somatic and autonomic nervous systems are distinguished. Both classifications are to some extent tentative because the functions of the nervous system are based on reflex arcs, which include the central and peripheral parts and regulate the activity of either the body or soma and its internal organs. In the previous videos, the features of the nervous tissue, which is the basis of the nervous system structure, were described. The structure of different parts of the nervous system will be considered in the next videos. Sensory ganglia Sensory ganglia of cranial and spinal nerves consist of pseudo-unipolar neurons surrounded by satellite cells. Only sensory ganglia of the eighth cranial nerves consist of bipolar neurons also surrounded by satellite cells. Sensory ganglia have a connective tissue capsule from which connective tissue penetrates their depth dividing neurons into groups. The capsule continues into the epineurium of the posterior root and spinal nerve. The cells are located on the periphery of the ganglion. The nerve cell processes, mostly myelinated ones, are located in the central part. Autonomic ganglia Autonomic ganglia are divided into para and prevertebral and terminal or intramural. Paravertebral ganglia are sympathetic ganglia lying along the length of the sympathetic trunk. Prevertebral or preaortic ganglia are sympathetic ganglia that lie between the paravertebral ganglia and the target organs. For example, celiac superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric ganglia. The histological structures of para- and prevertebral ganglia are similar. They consist of multipolar neurons and satellite cells covered with connective tissue capsules. Here, the preganglionic sympathetic nerve fibers, which are myelinated, synapse with the postganglionic neurons. Exons of the latter, which are non-myelinated ones, leave the ganglia. Nerve fibers that relay in the ganglia of the sympathetic trunk pass prevertebral ganglia without synapsing and those which synapse in prevertebral ganglia pass paravertebral ganglia without relaying. The neurotransmitter in the synapses of the sympathetic ganglia is acetylcholine. Besides efferent postganglionic neurons, sympathetic ganglia contain interneurons that exhibit catecholamine fluorescence and are called small intensely fluorescent cells. These cells receive preganglionic cholinergic fibers and may modulate ganglionic transmission. In some ganglia, they receive collaterals from postganglionic exons and may serve integrative functions. The neurotransmitter of these cells is dopamine. Parasympathetic ganglia lie near or within the organs they innervate, terminal or intramural respectively. They also consist of multipolar neurons and satellite cells. 
Here, the preganglionic parasympathetic nerve fibers synapse with the postganglionic neurons. The neurotransmitter in the synapses of parasympathetic ganglia is acetylcholine. Terminal ganglia have three roots and a variable number of branches. The motor root possesses presynaptic parasympathetic nerve fibers, myelinated. The sympathetic root carries postsynaptic sympathetic nerve fibers that traverse the ganglion without synapsing. The sensory root carries sensory nerve fibers that also do not relay in the ganglion. The branches carry all three types of nerve fibers. Postganglionic parasympathetic nerve fibers are non-myelinated. Intramural plexuses of the enteric nervous system were described in the video about enteric glia. Now it is expedient to characterize neurons of the enteric ganglia. Russian histologist Dogel was the first to classify enteric neurons by their morphology. He described neurons in the myenteric and submucosal plexuses of the intestine from humans and various animals and proposed to distinguish three types, now referred to as Dogel type 1, 2 and 3. Dogel type 1 neurons have one long axon leaving ganglion of origin and 4 to 20 short thick lamellar dendrites branching and ending in the ganglion of origin. The scientists suggested that these neurons are efferent. Dogel type 2 neurons also have one axon and up to 16 long, thin dendrites leaving ganglion of origin. It was noted later that many dendrites can be regarded structurally and functionally as axons, and the cells were called multi-axonal. Moreover, some of them occur in the adendritic form. Dogel type 3 neurons have one axon and about 10 or more dendrites branching and ending in the ganglion of origin, but they are longer than dendrites of Dogel type 1 neurons. Subsequent researchers confirmed Dogel's data in general, but the use of modern techniques, including electron microscopy, histochemistry, immunohistochemistry, dye injection and tracing methods allow to describe subtypes of Dogel types and discover new types. The up-to-date classification includes about 20 types described by different authors in various species. It takes into account the shape of neurons, their physiological properties, specific staining, the structures they innervate, the transmitters they utilize and the connections they receive. Now it is clear that enteric neurons can be grouped as intrinsic primary afferent neurons, interneurons and motor neurons, excitatory and inhibitory. The gastrointestinal tract contains non-neuronal pacemaker cells which are called interstitial cells of Cajal. They are located within different layers from the esophagus to the internal anal sphincter. In interstitial cells of Cajal contain a fusiform cell body with a thin cytoplasm, oval nucleus and two to five primary dendritic-like processes which divide further into the secondary and tertiary processes. Interstitial cells of Cajal generate rhythmic electrical activity in the smooth muscle cells. These electrical oscillations are called slow waves. 
they cause phasic contractions of smooth muscle cells. It was shown that varicose nerve terminals of enteric nervous system motor neurons lie close not only to smooth muscle cells, but also to interstitial cells of Cajal. Thus, enteric nervous system innervates both interstitial cells of Cajal and smooth muscle cells, and interstitial cells of Cajal may be conduits for muscular innervation besides direct innervation from enteric motor neurons to smooth muscle cells. Peripheral nerves Peripheral nerves, or nerve trunks, are built of myelinated and non-myelinated nerve fibers and three sheaths – the endoneurium, the perineurium, and the epineurium. The endoneurium surrounds each individual nerve fiber. It consists of loose connective tissue, possessing occasional macrophages, mast cells, fibroblasts, and collagen fibrils. The perineurium divides the nerve trunk into fascicles and surrounds each nerve fascicle. It consists of several layers of flattened cells. The quantity of layers depends on the fascicle diameter. The larger the diameter, the more the layers. The perineurium, as endo and epineurium, are often called connective tissue sheaths. In fact, the cells which they are composed of have the ability to produce collagen fibrils. But perineural cells are not typical fibroblasts. They are squamous, joined to each other by tight junctions and surrounded by basal lamina. That is why they are considered epithelioid cells or perineural glia. The perineurium serves as a diffusion barrier between the endoneurium and the extrafascicular tissues. It maintains the homeostasis of the endoneurium and defends ensheathed nerve fibers from toxins and infectious agents. The epineurium consists of dense irregular connective tissue, surrounds the whole peripheral nerve and fills the spaces between fascicles. Epineurium is rich in thick collagen fibers and contributes to the tensile strength of the nerve. Large nerve trunks are usually surrounded by adipose connective tissue, which is called paraneurium. Arteries supplying the nerves pass into the epineurium. The branches of arteries, which are called arterioles, penetrate the peri and endoneurium, forming hemomicrocirculatory bed. Endoneurial capillaries form a blood nerve barrier, isolating the endoneurium from the circulating blood and preventing uncontrollable molecule and ion leakage from circulatory system to peripheral nerve. The blood vessels entering the endoneurium from the perineurium are covered with a sleeve of perineurial cells. The endothelial cells and pericytes are connected with tight junctions and have a continuous basement membrane. Endoneurial capillaries, unlike epi and perineurial ones, are lined with non-fenestrated endothelial cells containing few endocytotic vesicles. Thus, the blood nerve barrier is represented by endothelial sites connected with tight junctions, pericytes, and basal lamina of the capillaries. And perineurium, as a part of the blood nerve barrier, defends endoneurium from extrafascicular blood vessels leakage. Thank you for attention.